So we're factoring. These are just a little bit up in level from the ones that we started off the year doing, but it's the same idea. And the reason I say it's just a little bit up is because we have a GCF in both of these. We have a GCF. What does GCF stand for? Greatest common factor. Yeah, so we need to look for a greatest common factor. Always, when you're factoring, always divide the GCF out before you start. It will make, number one, it will make it easier, but number two, more importantly, it actually makes it work depending on what method you're using. What is the GCF on this first one? That was a question. What's the GCF on this one? Go ahead, Cooper, just say it. It's two. Here's how you should show it. You need to divide every term by that GCF. And remember, it's only a GCF if all terms can divide by it. Pull that out front. Okay? Twos cancel in the first one, so we get n squared. Six divided by two is three. Leave the n with it. And then negative uh, 108 is now negative 54. You can't just drop off the 2. Like, you can't just forget that it was there. Because remember, we're not solving right now, we're just factoring. So this, if I went and re-multiplied, it should recreate the original. And if it doesn't, you did something wrong. So don't drop the 2. Now, we're, we still need to see if we can factor what's inside. So that's the two parentheses. So we're looking at two times two groups. So remember, how do we make n squared? Yeah, we need an n and an n. So remember the first term in a trinomial, the first term comes from the first two in these two groups, right? These two smaller pieces. The last term comes from the second piece of the two binomials. So really we need to do this, make our factor list of 54. So 1 times 54, 2 times 27, 3 times 18, 4 does not go in, 5 does not go in, 6, uh, 6 times 9 goes in, and then 7 doesn't work, 8 doesn't work, and then by the time we get back to 9, we're just going backwards on this. Now we need to look for a pair of those that multiply to 54 and add up to 3. So there's only one pair that can even make 3, which is what? 6 and 9. Here's my suggestion on how to do this part. Put your 6 and 9 in here, and then decide on sign. Like we need a negative 54 and a positive 3. Yeah, let me the 9 would have to be positive. And be awesome. So then you can always double check. We get n squared by multiplying the first two. Then I'll get 9n minus 6n. There's my 3n. And then minus 54. So that's fully factored. Factoring will make up a huge chunk of what we need to do in the coming months for like four or five months, it's going to be a while. <clears throat> Let's do this one a little bit quicker. This one also has a GCF of two just by chance, not because that's always true. I do, before we continue, I do want to remind you that you can have a GCF that's a variable, right? Like, if for some reason, if this had a k to the third, then I would want to divide out a k out of all three of these. Okay? Just don't forget, like, in most cases, the letter as a GCF is more important. Like, you want to get it out more than the number, honestly. Okay. So then we go factor that, and we know it's going to be two binomials. The only way to make k squared is k times k. How do we factor 30 in a way that adds up to 11? 6 and 5, yeah. This time everything is positive. And we're done. How'd you do on that? Spin a little bit. Okay. 
If it was bad, we're going to do a lot more. Like I said, we'll, we will review factoring when we need it and actually um, go into starting to use it as a tool. So it's coming. Just want to keep reminding you that it's out there. So homework was all about slope and writing equations. And were there any questions on those problems? Like any of them that you would like to see done or to talk through? Cooper? Uh, okay, I think I might have that on here. Yes. So this is 191 that we're about to do. The directions, remember, were to write an equation. Write an equation in y equals mx plus b. So we wrote that our first step was to pick two points. Is this the one you wanted? Okay. Was to pick two points, and that, would, that was if we had a graph there where you had infinite points or a table where you had maybe a whole bunch. But these, where they just give you the points, you don't really need to pick them. So then our next step is find slope. Maybe before I do that, what do we, what's the formula for slope? Let's review that real quick. Yeah. yeah. So it's change in y over change in x or rise over run. All those things mean the same thing. So we get negative 2 minus 2 and 7 minus 7. Correct. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. 7 minus 7 is 0. Based on our work from last class, what kind of line is that? Yes. Isn't that the y-axis? The y-axis? Yeah. Right. It, I have to look at this. Okay. We don't miss, well, we do know, but not, we haven't said yet, but it's not the y-axis, but I think you're going on the right direction. No? Isn't it undefined? Well, the slope is undefined. That's true. Why is it undefined? It's dividing by zero, and that's undefined. Okay, but again, my question was, what kind of line is that? Okay, I've heard horizontal. And then I have two people saying vertical. Somebody break the tie. What do you say? Huh? Horizontal. What do you say? We're still tied. Vertical. Anybody want to go horizontal? It's all in the water, right? Undefined is the one to like this and no slope. Okay. So ask yourself, which one has no change? Is it the X's or the Y's that has no change? X's. So that means we're not going left or right. So this must be a vertical line, okay? It still wants us to write an equation for it. Now we know it's vertical. So if you're thinking about where these points are, so one's at 7, positive 2, and one's at 7, negative 2. So what is the equation for that line? Okay, I had to have this conversation with the other class too, so here's um, my recommendation. I'll try to say this more than once, but I shouldn't have to. I put this up here because it's actually a very good, it's not just a poster that I put to take up space. It's a good synopsis of good study skills. You guys are all pretty good about paying attention in class. You do a good job with that, and you... I think take good notes, as long as you're copying mine, they're probably good notes. Um, I'll have to look more closely if you're organized and stuff. I want to point out this one, though. So, review, review, review. It can help you retain 80% of the information. How many of you have gone home and read your notes every night after class? So look around. Guess what your notes say, specifically? They talk about the slope of a vertical line, the equation of a vertical line, 
and everything about a vertical line you need to know. So, last one on here, don't cram for hours the night before a test. It doesn't work. A lot of people do that, and it's a stupid strategy. Uh, if you want to do yourself a favor, study every day. The night before a test, watch a movie, go to bed early, eat a good dinner, and that's how you have success. Okay? You guys know I went to a lot of school, nine years of college, and it works. I can promise you it works to do it that way. So here's what you need to do. How long would it take you to read two and a half pages of notes? Be honest. How long would it take you to read two and a half pages? Five minutes, five minutes, right? If you read through them like two or three times, with referencing a couple examples maybe, ten minutes, ten minutes a day, just, you, need, you could do that while you're in the bathroom, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, now it's in here. Then you know it, and this kind of stuff becomes almost like breathing, it's second nature. Let me show you what I mean. So we wrote on, for me, this page, we wrote about special lines down at the bottom. And we said, hey, vertical has a slope just like this, and it's x equals whatever number, which would be the x coordinate. Hopefully that's obvious, but that's exactly what, once we see that the slope is zero, that's exactly, sorry, not zero. Once we see the slope is undefined, that's exactly what we have here. It's just x equals 7. Okay? So again, move beyond just getting stuff done to get it done and turn it in to getting it. Do you see what I'm saying? And the notes, if they're not enough, again, go study your examples or whatever. But, and I get that you have other classes and it's busy and you have sports and activities. But you can squeeze in a few minutes to read notes here and there, and it will help, okay? Any others on the homework? Any others you'd like to check? Thanks for asking about that one. I had a professor in, in college. I was, it was a pre-med, um, pre-med, mostly anatomy, but had physiology too. This guy had created about this thick of a textbook that we actually wrote throughout the course. Like we would write in the notes, we would color the pictures, draw the pictures. It was cool, it was a really neat way of teaching. So we had our own kind of custom textbook. But I would go home and read that every night and study what we had learned. And it was, I had it in here. It was very helpful to do that. So I, I am telling you from experience that it works. If there are no questions on this, or any of the other problems, did anybody, raise your hand if you checked your answers. I'm curious to see how many of you are doing that. Awesome. Way to go, guys. Good job. Well, that makes me feel good about moving on. Then. So we're going to move into systems of equations. Let me show you one. While I'm doing that, why don't you have your notes ready, by the way, your yellow ones. I don't really want all this right now, so we're just going to cover that up. That picture right there is a system of equations. It's two lines, so it's two equations. Um, I do it on upload. It's too late, so it's late. So I'll come talk to you when we're working. Those are two lines. Not every system is two lines. Sometimes we have a parabola and a line, or etc. But how many of you would look at that and see a system that looks like something maybe? And I'm just going to eyeball this a little. Y equals 3 plus 1 half X. And it would be like the blue one and... I don't feel like calculating the other, so let's just do y equals negative 5 plus 4x. 
And you would probably be used to seeing these like this. And we have spent some time already solving equations that look like that, right? We actually spent quite a bit of time doing that. But did you know that those are systems of lines that are interacting on the graph? And so when we say solving a system, what do we mean? If I asked you to solve this, what are you actually solving for? Say that loud. When they intersect. Yeah, you're solving for that point where they cross each other, the point of intersection. So let's say you solve this down here and you get x equals like 3. Well, you just found the x coordinate where they cross. That's what we've been doing. But what are we missing? If we're talking about that point of intersection and we have solved for x, what are, what are we missing? What didn't we solve for? Well, yeah, we haven't solved for the y coordinate over here. So when I say systems, you're probably not used to thinking of it that way. That's what it is, though. You're probably used to thinking of it or seeing it this way. So I'm going to move these so it doesn't distract you for a second. How about that? Does that look more familiar? And you do things with these, like plug one into the other or smash them together. You know, we call it combining to solve for x and y. So it might have been a year and a half since you did these if you had geometry last year. This, I think, usually comes up somewhere in the middle of the school year in Algebra 1, so it's been a while. We'll talk about two words for algebraic solving. Does that one sound familiar? What's the other one? Anybody know? Elimination, sometimes called combination. Those, are, those will be our algebraic methods. We'll also solve practically. None of what I've just said and shown you is new. So that's good, right? Hopefully you'll be able to access some prior knowledge and remember how to do this. The stuff that we'll do that's new in Algebra 2 is when we have three equations with three variables. So not just x, y, but x, y, z. Three equations and a lot more steps. Same stuff, just more steps. So we'll get our handle on this and then move into the three, the three equations. Well, how would you solve that? If I say solve for x and y, any thoughts? Yeah. Would you change the sign to the bottom expression to be the opposite of the top? I could. So he's saying change the sign of the second equation to the opposite of what signs are there and, and then somehow use that with the first one. Here's what I want you to do first. This is going to be our first... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Couldn't you like solve to get like a y value and x value and just plug it in? You could do that. That would be substitution, right? If we got one of these letters by itself and plugged that expression into the other one, that would be substitution. We're going to do that in just a bit. Elimination we'll do on Monday. And then I'll give you your review also on Monday. And then you're going to have your first assessment next Wednesday. Okay? So if you need help, you have till then to come in and make sure you're clear on things. Uh, what I was going to say, though, is we're going to solve first by graphing. So everybody grab your graphing calculator. And let's start using that tool a little bit. budget office for really cheap. For what you get, it's really cheap. You, you won't be allowed to use any other tech on, a, on an assessment. 
And I just told you your first assessment is Wednesday. So time is running out. Okay. Going back to this one for now, we see two lines. And remember that I made the lines up. They should be kind of close, but they're not exactly what you see there, but they're close. So I want you to think back to what we did for the first couple days, at least, of this class, where I said solve that equation. What did you do? What would be your first step on this one specifically? Yeah, so he's saying get the x's on one side. There is a fraction in there, so if we didn't want to deal with it, what could we do? Yeah, we could multiply by the least common denominator, but since there's only one denominator, you just use is. Um, speaking of that, on your test, I would say maybe 50% of it is fraction equations. So you do need to know how to do fraction equations, okay? That wasn't just a class thing. Okay, then you'd get your x's, like maybe get this one half subtracted over, and you'd add your 5, and then get the x by itself. Well, that's a system. It just didn't look like what you were used to. So if you go back and think of this as two linear equations, you can use this calculator to solve that system. So let's do that. Let's first, unless you have something saved in your personal calculator and don't want to do this, let's reset the memory so it's fresh and ready to go. Okay? To do that, it's second button up here on the top left, second, plus sign, and then we're going to hit 7, 1, 2. Just hit the sequence 7, 1, 2. And your screen should say RAM cleared when you're done. From there, you can hit enter. And you're back to the calculation screen. So second plus 7, 1, 2. I don't know how helpful this is, but it does show the keys that I hit. Um, obviously, I forget to clear that. So we're going to go graph those two equations. To graph, and anything visual is up here at the top. So tables, graphs, those kind of things, the buttons for those are at the top. So hit Y equals. Oh, and let me... Let me um, there's an app, an emulator app. Is anybody using it right now for the 84? What is it called? Uh, it's like it, calculator, calculator 84. X. Huh? Calculator X. X? Yeah. I thought it was like calculate 84. No, it's called calculator, calculator X T84. Okay, so do what he said if you want to put that on there. You can also use Desmos. If, and this works just as a web-based thing. So Desmos graphing calculator. And you can follow along and do all this, do all this same thing on there. It's just it's not the same keystrokes, but you can do the same stuff. And then there's also an online emulator. This needs to be a W. Called Numworks, and it's like this one, where it's a computer-based calculator. So. If you don't have your graphic calculator right now, please pick either Desmos or Numworks. Get on there and follow us along. Okay? Back to this. Y equals. That means you have to have these in slope-intercept form. So this one, the, well, both of them are already in slope-intercept form. So let's go write 3. That was the plus sign. Let's go write 3 plus, and then... For fractions, my preferred method is just to put it in parentheses. So 1 half, so parentheses 1 divided by 2, and then your x is right by the green button. So 1 half x. There is a keystroke to put a fraction in there. It's second, or excuse me, alpha, the green, and then y equals. I just don't like to click all those buttons, so I don't. Arrow down. The other equation was negative 5 plus 4x. OK? 
Okay, be careful. If you hit the minus sign for a negative, it will give you an error. So you need to hit negative, which is down here at the bottom by the equals, or by the enter. So negative 5, what was it? Plus 4x. Plus 4, and then just hit that x button again. Okay. Then when you're ready to go look at this, you hit graph. So if you're there, go ahead and hit it, and then I'll show you what to do in a minute. If you hit minus instead of negative, it's going to say error syntax or something like that. So. Okay. So when you graph, it's going to show those two lines on a window. That window is variable in size. So if you don't see anything, you can zoom out to see it. But there's our point of intersection. You can see it kind of looks like this one, right? Let me go move this out of the way. Different windows have different scale, but it's similar enough. So we haven't solved anything. All we've done is graph it. Here's how we solve. Ready? Up at the top, you see a trace button. And above that, you see calc. So to get to the blue, you need to hit the second button. So second trace button takes you to the calculate menu. And number five is going to have us find the point of intersection. So hit number five, where it says intersect, point, uh, push five. And it has to ask you a couple questions to make sure it knows where you want to look. Okay? So it's calling this a curve. We know it's a line, but sometimes it might be a curve. Is the first one that you want to check 3 plus 1 half x? Is that the right equation is what it's asking? So you say, you say yes. You just hit enter. Yep. Is the second one you want to check negative 5 plus 4x? Yep, that's the one we put in there. Hit enter. Okay. You can see that it's putting a guess down here where the cursor is flashing. It should be okay, but it's really easy just to arrow that cursor closer to the intersection. Doesn't have to be right on it. Just put it over there in the ballpark. So is that the guess? Yeah, sure, that's a guess. Then we hit enter, and it immediately solves our equation for us. It gives us x. So x is not a whole number, and we didn't expect it to be. And neither is y. But now we have that point of intersection. We just solved that equation. This one right here, x is approximately 2.28. Pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. So think about how you can use this on work. I will ask you for algebraic steps, but what could you use this for? Checking your answer, right? How nice would that be to know that you have that correct once you circle your final answer, okay? All right. How about this one? You can do it on this too, but what do you have to do first? You've got to get y alone so it's in slope intercept form. Okay? So on your notebook, like on your where you write your examples, go ahead and get those into graphable form. Plug them in to your calculator or to Desmos and see what you can solve. To make these graphable, we need to get y by itself. So we just need to get this y by itself. Probably, you can do it multiple ways. It doesn't really matter. I might add y. And then subtract 7. Okay, so there's one of them. The other one, I'll do slightly different. So this one I'm going to subtract x. Now we need to get rid of this negative 2. How? 
Yeah, divide. It's being multiplied, so let's divide everything by negative 2. Whenever you have that process where you're dividing lots of stuff, I think you should show all of the things being divided instead of some students like to just do like a line like this and have everything up there, but I think they make more mistakes. I would not recommend doing it that way. Anyway, these two cancel. There's our y by itself. 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. Negative divided by negative is positive x over 2. And it's okay to put it in the calculator as x over 2, or you could say 1 half x. Either one. Okay? So we have our two graphable equations. And let's go. To get rid of these, you just hit the clear button right here. So first one was y equals 3x minus 7. And negative 2 plus x halves. Remember the negative is not the minus. So negative 2 plus x divided by 2. It's actually easier to enter it in your calculator if you leave it as x over 2 instead of 1 half x. Go graph. There's the intersection. Then we hit second trace for the calculation menu. Hit 5. Is that the first equation? Yes. Is that the second one? Yes. Best guess. We're a little off. Let's go put it over there closer. Yes. There it is. 2, negative 1. So our solution needs to be written as a point, because it is a point. And the solution to that system is 2, negative 1. The x, y coordinate pair that makes both true at the same time. Yeah. How many of you got that from your calculator? Uh oh. There's only a couple of hands. Okay. Yeah. I don't know where to like look like that. Okay. Because there's like I see two uh two Y's and I see three one X. Okay. That's that online version or something, right? Okay. I'll have to look at that. Well, let's say you don't have a calculator. What what could you do? Yeah. Well, but we're solving graphically right now. So you're a little bit, you're doing the algebraic version. Which is okay. We're, we're going to get there. You guys can graph on graph paper, can't you? I have graph paper here and a whole bunch over there because it looks like the stack is low. What do you need to be careful of if you're graphing on graph paper? Kevin and Carlos can listen. If you're graphing on graph paper, what do you have to be careful to do? For this. You gotta have a straight line, your points have to be perfect, okay? It won't work if you're fudging it a little, okay? It can't be off. But you absolutely can use graph paper. All right, so then that kind of brings this question up. If you're gonna solve this, should you just grab graph paper and solve it on graph paper? No. The only reason I'm having you do this is because we have this graphing tool that allows this process to go a little faster, okay? Otherwise, we need to do this algebraically, which is what you were talking about, okay? So write this same problem down in your notebook as an example for, we're just gonna talk about substitution today. Let's see what you remember about that. So 3x minus y equals 7, x minus 2y equals 4. You do want these to make sure you can read them that, that says solving by substitution in your notes. Again, this is all review. So if you're doing well with this, yay for you. Keep that confidence. 
With substitution, this is now algebraic, where we're taking steps and working it out and working through. We want to get one of the letters isolated and plugged in for in the other equation. Which letter, which variable is the easiest to get by itself in this system? Y. He says Y, and this could be somewhat subjective. And he, you say, he says X. What other thoughts? Ivan, what do you think? Y. Y. How about you, Andrea? X. She says X. You see what I mean? It's kind of subjective. So you do what think what seems best for you. Hi, Lydia. Thank you. I don't have one. Okay, thank you. Personally, I think X is easier to get by itself because this Y up here, this Y is negative, and then you have to be careful to deal with that negative. For the X, you just go X, or add 2Y to both sides, and X is by itself that fast. Okay? But if you saw the Y as easier, then that's what you do. Okay? There are options. So we get one variable by itself. That says X is also... 4 plus 2y. It's like a nickname. So now we can solve by plugging that in 4x in the other equation. So 4 plus 2y goes straight in there. And now we have an equation with just x's. Sorry, with just y's. Why can't we just solve these without doing that? Like, why, why couldn't I just solve this first one and get a value? Jason? Okay. It's not just y. There's two variables, right? That's an issue. Okay. Let's quickly do this one. Okay. So we got y. If you need steps, call me over. We got y. What do we do with it to get x? Now we have to plug that value in to get the other variable, right? Well, where should you plug it in? You have three choices. Which one of those would be the best one? Push yourself to think best, right? Not just can I, but can I do it the best way? Uh, most of you will be taking SAT this year. SAT demands a lot of you, and you've got to be on your game, which means you can't be slow, right? Yeah. I would put in third one. Why the third one? Yeah, if I have Y and X is already by itself, once I plug Y in right here, that's all numbers. And it's something you could even just type in your calculator. So, I totally agree with Hayden. X equals 4 plus 2. Plug that value in for Y. So, 2 times negative 1. And X is 2. Well, are you surprised that our answer was 2, negative 1? Shouldn't be, because we already solved this by graphing, and that's what we got. Shouldn't it be the same? Okay. How many of you feel like this is familiar? Familiar enough to feel somewhat confident? About half, maybe a little more? Okay. Let's go write some things down. Give you a little more to study. So we're going to write a few different methods and then some concepts on here. First, we're going to write this. 
What is a solution to a system? We wrote about a solution. One of the first things we wrote was about a solution. What is a solution to a system? Can you put your phone away? I can still see it. What is a solution this time? It's a little more complicated. The value of the variables. This time we have to say more than one. In parentheses, put all that make all, again, all equations. Oh, that's freaking out. Hold on. True. So when we get to three equations, those values have to make all three true at the same time. How can you check if your answer is a solution? Yeah. Plugging it back in to all equations, right? One other thing I want to just put for conceptual purposes over here. I wish I'd have left more room for that. Let me scoot this over. Never mind. I'll just have to write it. It's the point of intersection. of the functions. Underline the word point. You do need to make the take the step when you're solving to give your answer as a coordinate point. So x, y, or x, y, z. the background of what is a solution to a system, what does that mean? Now we'll write specific strategies, so solving by graphing, by substitution, and by elimination. Again, we're not going to get to elimination until next week. So. Everybody good on this? It's okay to take pictures, just make sure you go back and get that stuff on your notes if you're not writing it right now. Okay. I don't want to squeeze that into this one box, so I'm going to move to the next page. So solving by graphing. Most of the notes have steps today, and they're not super long. What did we do first just now when we solved by graphing? I handed, or I showed you that system with two stacked equations. What did you have to do first? Um, get one variable by itself? Yes, but specifically which one? For graphing. Well, that was for substitution. Uh, why? Why? Right. We need to get y by itself. So step one, you need to get it graphable. And 
I'm going to say as needed, because that's not like every single time that you have to do that step. Most of the time you will. Okay, step two. Look for points of intersection. Those are the solutions. This can be done on graph paper or depending on circumstances, your calculator. And this is just a reminder, give the solution as a point. We're going to put two reminders underneath here. Under the title for the section. First, how do I want to word this short? This is a good way to check your answer on the TI. Or, like that's for a test or quiz, if you're doing this for homework, you could test it with Desmos, with NumWorks, Calculator, like any of those. So maybe we shouldn't say TI specifically and just put Calculator. If you have a TI, that's what you're going to write. And then second reminder is just the key on, this is TI specific, remember second calc, second trace. And then number five, which is intersect, and that's on the TI. So second trace number five, that's how you're going to be able to solve. Okay. We just wrote this is a good way to check your answers, right? You will have to show your algebraic steps, but you can check if they're correct using this. Okay, substitution, let's write those notes. Then I'll let you work. I meant to have us do some, a problem in between, sorry for the long notes session. So for substitution, now we need to get a variable, it doesn't have to be y, so get a variable by itself. I'm going to put easiest in parentheses, so if x is easier, get it by itself. If y is easier, get it by itself. Doesn't matter. We will not be doing substitution on those big problems with three equations. It just gets to be a nightmare. I mean, you can. It's, I'm not going to show you it, though. Um, I'm saying it's possible to do it that way. It just really does feel overwhelming sometimes to substitute. So step two, substitute the expression or the isolated variable into the other equation.
parentheses of the variable. In other words, plug it in in all the spots where that variable is. Okay? I'll let, that was a long one. I'll give you a second before I write the next one. Solve for the remaining variable. Then you're going to plug its value back into an original equation. Actually, we don't need to say original. Let's just say a prior, because I can't remember who pointed it out. It was Hayden, I think. That one we just did where x was already by itself would be the best place. So substitute it back into a prior equation and solve for the for first variable. And what do we do to write our solution? In other words, how do you give it? As a point. As a point. Okay. One last thing to write, and that is when should you use substitution? Unless you're just a substitution diehard, which I would strongly encourage you to not be. When should when is the best time to use substitution? When the equation already has x and y equals. Yeah. So he said if you didn't hear him, if an equation already has x or y by itself, or if it's easy to get it there. Do not go down a rabbit trail trying to get a variable by itself. I wouldn't. Just if you're in that boat, just do elimination, which we'll talk about next week. So underneath here, put when. When should you use substitution? Only if a variable is, and we're going to emphasize this word, easy to isolate. If you're taking like two or three steps to get a variable by itself, you probably shouldn't use substitution. Do you want to do another one together with the algebraic approach? Yes? Okay. I'll put one up here then. Let's do that one. I'll let you work on it for, let's say, three or four minutes, five minutes maybe, and then... All right, so I think getting this x or getting this y by itself is about the same. In terms of easy, our notes say get the easiest one. Only because this is on the bottom, and I can write it better, I'm going to get this x by itself. But either one is equally easy. So that says x is also known as 6 plus 2y. So I can take the first equation now. When you substitute, use parentheses, and this can be substituted right there for x. And now our equation is all y's, and now we can just distribute and solve. So 12 plus 4y plus y. This feels very familiar. It's like the other one. Yeah. Anyway, so we have y. 
take y back here into the x one or into the originals. Either one. Uh, maybe this time, just for fun, I'm going to do the, the first original. So 2x plus negative 1. Okay? And then we go, we need to get rid of the 1. So we get 2x equals 8. So add 1, divide by 2. And we get x is 4. Is that the end? No. Why not? you got to plug x into the other equation. Oh, uh, no, I just need to write it as a point. Or negative one. Good? You're going to get some practice substituting, but also graphing. So let's see if I put this on a slide. No. I want you to start on this and work till the bell as usual. This is open stacks, so OS. This is 4.1. And you're doing number 35 to 45 odd. Here are my directions. Please do both. You're going to solve by substitution. Please practice this method. Then I also want you to solve by graphing. Now, this is on your calculator, on your calculator or Desmos. So you can't really show me, but you need to practice it, okay? On your homework, you could write like checked by graphing or something, if you do that. Um, remember to do that, to check by graphing, we wrote notes about it, but you have to get it into graphable form. So you'll have to solve for y, like get y by itself. Alright, so you have about five or six minutes, so please get one done.